I want to tell you about the 15th night of my solitude, because on the 15th night, the jungle fell down, and I'm not saying it so to speak. The jungle just went down. The storm was so big. It was gushing storm with tremendous rain and wind. And what happens? Trees start falling down. And each tree that comes down takes everything in its way down. The big, big trees come down. The reason why they come down, because the trees in the Amazon are not deep-rooted. They're actually very shallow-rooted. So huge, huge trees, but actually the roots are not going into the soil because there's no nurture. Um, the soil is so washed by constant rains and floods that there's not, not much nutrient in the soil. So the trees send the roots shallow, and the jungle rot keep feeding the tree. But when there's so much rain and so much water, everything is turned to water, and the huge trees are coming down. And you can imagine I'm lying under a huge tree that is moving from side to side. And I tell you, in a night like that, even if you're an atheist, you scream, God, please help. Because nothing else can help. And somehow, the, no tree went on me, went down on me. But as the morning came, the first light, a huge wave came and washed over me. The river flooded and washed the jungle, and it just took me. I managed to save my only possession, my shoes. I managed to save my shoes and tie them around my neck as the water took me, and they took me towards the river, and there was no river. From bank to bank, there were only trees, thousands. I cannot explain. The whole river was just trees that were taken, eroded. And I knew that if I, I get to the river, I die in seconds, so I tried to swim against the current, away from, and I swim with all my power, and I, I, I get to a tree, and I pull my body, and I push away from, from the tree, and like this, I'm fighting for my life. And after like 10, 15 minutes, I managed to get to a higher place, to a little hill. Over there, I collapse, and I see that I tore my feet to bits. I destroyed my feet. And I lie there, and day passes, and another day, until the flood recedes enough so I can crawl back to the river, because without the river, I'm lost in the middle of the Amazon. I must find the river. So I'm crawling now because my feet wouldn't carry me. It's too steep. I cannot, you know, there's too much pressure on my feet. And I'm crawling. I was one big open wound. My feet were just exposed, raw flesh. There's so much pain. But because of so much pain, I uncovered a deep secret about pain that you cannot uncover intellectually. This one you have to suffer in order to understand. But what happened is, I realized there's two aspects. One aspect is the pain, which was tremendous. And the other aspect was a voice inside my head that was screaming, it hurts, it's not fair, I cannot take it anymore, why me? That voice stopped, because day after day, the voice stopped. And I'm telling you, the pain without that voice, you can handle it. It's the voice that you cannot handle. The pain is pain, but the voice is suffering. The suffering comes from the voice, not from the body sensation. The body sensation is a body sensation. But the suffering coming from positioning yourself as a victim. We cannot escape pain. Nobody can escape pain. But we don't have to be victims. I wasn't a victim. I was crawling on my knees, on my elbows. I wasn't a victim. I wasn't about to break down. I was strong. But minutes later, I broke down because the worst thing happened to me. And the worst thing was a surge of hope. 
As I'm crawling down the hills, suddenly an airplane. I hear the noise of an airplane. And as I hear that noise of an airplane, I know the airplane is after me. They're coming to save me. And that surge of hope going through me. I jump on my feet and I scream and I run. But I cannot do anything. I'm far away from the riverbank. Under the canopies, there's nothing open. Even if there was, the airplane is so far, so up in the sky, so deep in the clouds, going so fast, and it's clear to me that the airplane couldn't see me. And as the noise dies, so am I. Something snaps inside me. I fall in the mud and I cry. And for the first time in 17 days, I actually give up. I give up, and from the depths of my soul, a pure prayer rises, and the prayer is, please, God, let me die. I really want to die. Because I know that if I die, it will stop. I will have some rest. And I really deeply, deeply pray just to die. See, it's amazing. Life is amazing. There's a saying that I know for true for myself, that even if you give up on life, it doesn't mean that life will give up on you. I gave up, but life didn't give up on me. What I'm about to tell you sounds really strange, but it happened to me. As I'm crying there in the mud, in an impossible way, suddenly somebody else is next to me crying as well. And it's a young woman, and I clearly hear her cry. Now, this is so bizarre, this is so impossible, that it makes me stop crying and raise my head and look who is crying next to me. As I look, there's a young woman lying in the mud next to me and sobbing. The moment I see her, I jump on my feet and I start screaming because I have a realization. The airplane may turn and come back. We still have a chance. There's no time to waste. And I grab her and I scream, get up, get up. We still have a chance. We can make it to the river. Stop crying now. And I grab her by the arm and I start pulling her, running towards the river. For two entire days, I take care of her. From morning to evening, I speak to her. I encourage her. I pu push her. I promise her, just keep walking until we make it to, to an opening in the river. When we make it to an opening, I'll build you a camp. I'll go into the jungle. I look for eggs. I look for fruit. I'll take care of you. Don't stop. And I beg her, and I do whatever it takes to, keep, to push her. And then it's the 18th night. And every night, I choose a tree to lie between the roots, and I break palm fronts to cover. This night, I choose a tree wide enough for two people. And even though, from the flood, there's nothing left on the jungle floor to eat, and I'm reduced to nothing, and I'm all one open injury, I cut enough palm fronds to cover two people. And I tell her, get closer to me so we can get warmth from each other. And as I hug her, I see there's nobody in my arms. There's simply nobody there. At that stage, I get so scared because I think I'm just crazy. I'm losing my mind. I don't know where, what happened. I cannot explain this mystery till this very day. I don't really know what happened. I, don't, I cannot explain this experience because <sighs> I think that the most logical explanation is that this was just imagination. So she wasn't real, this was just imagination. But even that cannot really explain it because I didn't imagine her. So if it was imagination, whose imagination was she? When I was lying there in the mud, crying and crying, I, wouldn't, I didn't think, OK, let's create an imaginary person and pretend. I didn't do it. So if this was an imagine, imagination, whose imagination was it? I don't know. The second thing is more amazing for me. She saved my life. But how did she save my life? Because she needed me. That was maybe one of the biggest realizations I had in my life. 
I didn't have any more power to take care of myself. But the moment there was somebody next to me that needed me, I found the power. So a true power is actually given to us when we give it to others.